Hey everybody, welcome back as always. In today's video, let's just keep it simple. I'm going to go over the basics of the dental anatomy with you, specifically focusing on the head, okay? So nothing else. And obviously we're not going to go over all of the bones of the skull, but these ones you do have to know. These are the ones that if you forget to study anatomy, I don't see that happening, but if you forget to study anatomy, this is the one slide that I want you to look at just before you take the board exam. So you need to know the basics such as the main different parts of the skull, okay? So up here, you have the forehead. Right here, that is the bone of the frontal. So the frontal bone off to the sides, think your temples, that kind of area, those are the parietals on either side. You have the zygomatic bone, which are your cheekbones, the occipital bone, which you can't see here, but that's at the base of the skull. I find on the board exam, they love to ask about the occipital bone for whatever reason. So know that's at the base of the skull. Obviously the maxilla, you have to know that bone does not move. The mandible is the movable bone. Sometimes on the board exam, they're going to talk about the maxilla and the mandible. Which one of those is the movable bone? The mandible is, not the maxilla. The maxilla does not move. When we give a patient a night guard, it's typically for the top teeth because of the maxilla not moving. That's why we do it. But we give a night guard for somebody who has TMJ issues, that's actually going to be on the bottom. So it does make a difference if the bone is movable or not. Those are the most common ones. But of course, as you guys can see here, there's going to be more. I didn't mention um, on the sides here, near the eyes, the um, temporal bone, okay? The temporal bone. So sometimes you're like temples, if you have a sore head, it's gonna be here, or it could be upwards here towards the parietal bone. Parietal, temporal, there is a difference, okay? So remember those main bones there. What about the lacrimal bone? Lacrimal, find the nose and then it's right there, okay? But then you're also going to have the ethmoid bone. Lacrimal, close to the nose, Ethmoid is closer to the orbit of the eye. They have it right here, you guys. Ethmoid is in purple. The lacrimal is in green, closer to the nose. But then where is the nasal bone? So that's kind of easy right here. They have it in blue right there for you. What about the palatine bone? That's inferior. So quite often, on the board exam, they're going to try to confuse you guys, and they're going to ask those harder types of bones, such as the lacrimal bone, ethmoid bone, and the palatine bone. You need to know the differences. They're very similar in placement, right? So the palatine bone is inferior to the orbit. The ethmoid bone is close to the orbit as well, but the palatine, or sorry, the, the lacrimal bone, see guys, even I'm getting confused. The lacrimal bone is closest to the nose. So then coming from the nose out. So coming from the nose, the lacrimal bone. Inside of that, you have the ethmoid, the bottom of the orbit, you have the palatine bone. So see how it's a lot easier to study for anatomy if you have an image to look at and then just keep practicing using your own head. That's what I would do. But then remember, you guys, you need to know Look at all of these different areas that they're pointing out. The mental foramen. They also pointed out the infraorbital for foramen. What is a foramen? It's a hole. So let's say they try to trick you on the board exam and they're talking about all kinds of holes. Even if you forgot each one, think, okay, the mental foramen, where could that be? Well, the mental protuberance is the chin. So maybe the mental foramen is around here. And then what about, which one did we just mention? The infraorbital foramen. Well, if you forgot where that is, think, okay, the orbits up here, the infra inferior to that would be here. So maybe that's the infraorbital foramen. So know the difference between the different types of holes, know the different areas of the skull and know if they're 
like mesial to something, inferior to something, superior, that will really help. So I hope this helps you guys. Let me know if any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.